Hey guys, as I mentioned in the basic AV concepts video, I'll go over signal management systems, which entails cable types, connectors, signal integrity, distance limits, and best practice for rack building. Let's go over some of the common cable types and connectors in Pro AV. We have two types of wires, some with stranded cores and some with solid cores. Here is a simple example of a solid wire versus stranded wires. The next wire requirement criteria is if it's regular twisted pairs or shielded. The difference between regular and shielded is that shielded has the individual wires wrapped in foil, which are then wrapped again for double protection. Now that we know the basics, let's move on. Many manufacturers sell these cables and wire types, however, they may go under different names or cable part numbers. Coax. RG6 is used for analog AV systems and SDI and HDSDI applications. RG59 is used for analog AV system short connection runs. The RG6 coax cables are usually terminated with a male or female BNC connector. BNC cables can be used in a variety of configurations with any computer, video, or audiovisual component. The RG59 coax cables are usually terminated with male RF, F-type connectors and used between a TV satellite or cable TV and computer, video, or Pro-AV component. Dual stranded twisted pair speaker wires are high performance wires for audio signals and they usually connect to a Phoenix, spring clips, or speaker terminal block. So its termination is basically stripping the tip off the red and black wire, leaving about 3 eighths of an inch exposed on each tip and then twisting them in order to keep the strands together. Shielded twisted pair with ground wire or shield is used for audio and control signals. That wire gauge is usually preferred for audio signals. It's usually terminated to an XLR male or female input or output connector, a Phoenix block, or other termination connection types that can also be used for this wire. Shielded twisted pair with ground wire is used for audio and control signals. It's usually terminated to an input output Phoenix block or DB9 connector, or it gets soldered to a TRS audio connector. Dual shielded twisted pair with individual ground wires is usually used for audio and control signals. Control and audio connections are usually terminated to an input output Phoenix block, star quad XLR or DB9 connector. This is commonly used for RS-232 and RS-422 communication. When AV drawings don't have details on RS-232, 422, or 485 connections, it's wise to pull this type of wire as a spare during cable pulls. More about this in future videos. Four solid twisted pairs ranging from 22 to 28 gauge wires for CAT5E, 6, 6A, and 8 are usually used for data exchange including audio, video, or control and are terminated with an RJ45 connector, a patch bay, or wall keystone jack. In some cases, it can be used for serial analog connection, only using the desired wire pairs and just stripping the end for perhaps a connection to a Phoenix block. When it comes to data cables, like CAT6, Common preferences are different. Solid wire is the preferred choice because of the attenuation of stranded wire. Solid wire does not have the same current dissipation as the stranded wire. Stranded wire is used in patch cables because of its excellent flexibility. Single mode or multi-mode fiber are used for high-speed data exchange, which includes audio, video, data, which includes control. Single mode and multi-mode fiber have their differences. Those fiber connections are usually terminated in SC or LC depending on the infrastructure, the type of fiber patch bay and endpoint it's connecting to. 
Optical fiber cabling is also widely deployed and can be used for extended lengths, highest bandwidth, improved security, or where total electrical isolation is required. Regular and high-speed HDMI cables are used to carry digital, audio, video, and control signals between a source and destination. They are used in conjunction with an HDMI input and output. Display port, or DP for short, is an audio and video interface originally intended to replace older video interfaces like DVI and VGA. DisplayPort is primarily used by desktop computers, laptops, and projectors. There are passive and active DP cables, and we'll cover that in another video. USB cables, simple and high speed, are used in ProAV for allowing you to interface with common AV devices or to transfer AV or control data between equipment that supports USB A to B or C connection ports. Let's go over some charts to go over the signal integrity of those cables and wire types. Now, based on all those wire standards, it's a good idea to build your racks with that in mind where you group certain signal types together for less interference and based on their cable types for easier device access during commissioning and servicing the equipment in the rack. Run your power and control cables on one side of the rack and your signal cables on the other side. Keeping power and signal lines on opposite sides of the rack will assure no interference. Leave enough slack at each connection point for service and reducing cable stress. If you're serious about Pro AV, you should consider getting a CTS book. I'll leave a link in the description. Like, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to click the notification bell.